Welcome back to Attempting World Recipes. Today we're trying these milky, delicious, melt-in-your-mouth donuts, which are not donuts. I quickly realized that. We're making gulab jamun, and to my surprise, these are popular in many countries, especially India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. As somebody who's never tried Indian cuisine, I was excited. I do not have any Indian restaurants nearby, so this was a treat, literally. If you've never had these, consider these milky fritters drenched in syrup. I'll leave the recipe I used in the description box below and boy was it a challenge to follow a tutorial in another language. I started by making the dough. In a saucepan, combine ghee, milk, and milk powder. I quickly realized the dough was a bit crumbly and dry, so if you need it, add more milk. Now I'm not sure if this is the authentic way of making gulab jamun, but it sure wasn't the easiest way of making these. A lot of steps are involved, but do not let that scare you, these are worth the effort. Cook the dough over low heat for about 5 minutes and set aside to cool. In another pan over low heat, we're going to make the syrup. You'll need water, sugar, cardamom, split those open, and saffron. Allow the sugar to dissolve, bring to a boil, and add the rose water. Do not add essential oils. Set aside, and before we continue on, I want to thank HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. HelloFresh is a meal delivery service that delivers fresh, quality ingredients from the farm to you in less than a week. If you're looking for an easy way to eat well, save money, and cut back on expensive takeout, you gotta try HelloFresh. What I love about HelloFresh is that you get to try meals that you might have never tried on your own. Listen, I love trying new recipes, but sometimes I'm put off when I know I need to buy a whole container or jar of ingredients that I'm only gonna be using once for that one recipe. HelloFresh portions out the ingredients, no leftover ingredients lying around for months, no food waste. And you get to try new delicious recipes. They cater to different lifestyles. If you have diet goals, if you have allergies, their plans are customizable, so they make it super easy for you. And you're saving time, okay? Skip the trip to the grocery store and choose the meals you'd like to try at HelloFresh.com. The fair collection features limited time recipes made with seasonal produce and premium protein. So go to HelloFresh.com and use my code and find out how you can get 21 free meals plus free shipping. Link in the description box. Okay, so let's go back to the cool dough, which looks dry. At this point, I started to panic. I thought something went terribly wrong, but watching the video tutorial, I realized you're supposed to add flour and water and knead this into the actual final dough. The amount of water you'll need will depend on your dough, so add it as you go. Every video tutorial I watched had the same method. Use your palm, press, and slide the dough onto your work surface. As you do this, the dough will become softer, almost like a soft cookie dough. At this point, I thought, what an interesting donut recipe. Little did I know these are not donuts. The disappointment in my face, which quickly turned into excitement because these were delicious. Now you should be able to easily shape these into little balls. If these crack, if the dough seems dry, continue to knead the dough. Again, we're looking for a cookie dough consistency. If you've ever made snowball cookies, that's what this dough reminds me of. I'm referring to the actual, you know, rock dough. Gently lower these into your hot oil and you want to cook these until they become a gorgeous deep golden color. These will initially drop to the bottom of the pan but as soon as these start to cook they'll flow back to the top. I think I should have cooked mine a little bit longer. From the pictures I've seen mine don't look nearly as pretty. I mean just look how gorgeous and delicious these look. Mine look sad. Now what's so interesting about these shredders is that once you fry them you're going to then, you know, drop them immediately into this syrup we made before and boil these in the syrup for three minutes. How interesting is that? You fry these and then you boil them. I couldn't wait to try these. Then I found out that boiling is not enough. Okay, I thought the recipe had come to an end, but no, no. Okay, because we have to soak these in the syrup for at least six hours. So turn off the flame and let these just hang out in the syrup for at least six hours. In that time, these are going to absorb the syrup and swell up. I actually had to manually remove some of them from the pan because they were 
They kept swelling, okay? And the pan was just small. It was not containing all of them. By the time these were done soaking, it was 10 p.m. So I left mine to soak overnight. I read that's perfectly fine to soak these overnight, but please let me know. The next day, I was very excited to try these. Excuse my sleepy face. I was not planning on filming this the next day, but I thought it'd be fun, you know, to give you a real-time reaction. Trying Indian treats for the first time ever for breakfast. Okay, so they don't taste like donuts at all, but they're delicious. They're so good. The texture's so interesting. They're like melt away fritters. They just melt in your mouth. Mm. You can taste the rose water, just a hint. The cardamom, I can't really taste it. I do also want to try them with ice cream. I read online that you can put these on ice cream. And then you can have these either cold, room temperature, or hot. That's what I read. I don't know if it's true. Let me know. Right now they're like room temperature, I guess. They're so good. Okay. That's enough. I think I have like five. Okay. Bye. <laughs>